Hi. So this is my first time to the Azores Islands, and uh, I've been around the globe, and this is paradise here, really. This is really incredible. And coincidentally, I'm actually here today to share with you a very teeny tiny, itty bitty, abridged introduction of a very elaborate map of paradise that I've been making for the past six years. I call it the Consciousness Positioning System, or CPS for short. And in the same way that the GPS maps the outer environment, the CPS maps the inner environment. And I know that sounds conceptual and super weird, but we're going to get into it. And I want to begin now by actually sharing with you some photographs that I've been taking on the island since I've been here. And for those of you who know the island well, uh, these images will be very familiar. So here's the first one. Isn't that beautiful? So, so I have to read from this because my Portuguese is terrible. This is the south side of the island near Agua do Alto. And just look at, the, look at the horizon. I love that. So here's another image. This is the north side of the island near Porto Formosa. Look at the depth of that, that blue. That is totally untouched by human contamination. Here's another image. Any takers on where this might be? No, not the airport. This is the walking path toward Mirador Ponta do Zé. And I am just, I am just beaming here, just full of vitality in these colors, until guess what happened? I lost cell phone data reception at this spot, and look at what happened to my landscape. That colorful path I was on turned into this, colorless and lifeless. Now, before I lost data reception, I was actually playing Pokemon Go. Those, those digital landscapes there, that was from Pokemon Go. And for those of you who don't know what that is, briefly, Pokemon Go is an augmented reality gaming app that uses geolocation technology to create virtual versions of your immediate environment. Right? So all those colors that were giving me a sense of meaning, of purpose, of entertainment, of fulfillment, vanished. And I was left in this landscape of emptiness, loneliness, despair, meaninglessness. And I literally, I found a little spot here in the grass, and I curled up into a ball, and I cried my brains out until that last little tear and this incredible presence introduced herself. She said, I am Alexandra Gria, but since your Portuguese is so bad, you can call me Ale for short. And I thought, oh, Alegria, what a wonderful and joyous moment to meet you. And I said, might I take a picture of you to share with my friends at Glex? And she, she said, go ahead, but you should know that you can't ever fully capture me. And I said, okay. So here I am right now, and I'd like to share with you my picture of Alegria. Beautiful, isn't she? Isn't she amazing? And I said, Alegria, where have you been all my life? And she said, I've been right here, but you've been too stuck in earthly consciousness to see me. And I said, earthly consciousness? What do you mean? She said, I can explain, but we have to make a deal. Here's the deal. I'm about to say some things right now that you may not understand. File it anyway. If you're stranded in a desert trying to get from point A to point B, and you suddenly stumble upon a map of an ocean, pick it up. Why? You might get to the end of the desert one day and realize that point B is across an ocean. So you'll be happy to have that map. So what I'm trying to say, she said, is, even though you don't understand it now, doesn't mean it should be rejected. And I said, deal. She said, okay, here we go. She said, the reason you haven't been seeing me is because, well, you kind of took a bite into a donut. I said, a donut? She said, look, this here is a Taurus energy field. And this energy field is all over the natural universe. Actually, the magnetic field of the Earth is a Taurus field. And the Earth sits in that. Now, the earthly paradigm that you consumed was one of gravity. And I said, well, I would have remembered eating that. She said, yeah, I know. The story they told you about that fall had to do with a forbidden apple. Same thing. An apple sits in a Taurus energy field. Now, before biting into this, you see the apple in its totality. 
The moment you bite into this torus field, you slice it, you go from overview to inside. You shift from fifth dimensional consciousness to fourth dimensional consciousness. And I said, okay, but what does that have to do with me? She said, everything. You too sit in a torus energy field. She said, that perception that you had of that apple is just a reflection of the limited perception that you have of the totality of yourself. And she said, hey, you are what you eat. She said, the interesting, about this, the interesting thing about this is what we see here are figure eight symbols, which, geometrically speaking, are actually called lemnus gates. And we're going to talk about this. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to color this lemnus gate blue. Why? Because blue is often used as a symbol for consciousness. And as you've been limited to this view for the entirety of your conscious life, you interpret this symbol as eternity. From where I stand, she says, I see this as a symbol for an eternity of a limited view. And what you do as humans is you just repeat the same patterns and habits over and over again. And I said, what patterns? And she said, patterns of duality, patterns of opposition, patterns of conflict, patterns of taking sides. And to see how that works, watch this arrow going around the energy field. On one side, we have arrows pointing inward. On the other, outward. This is the duality. And she said, we might as well put good and evil on this, right? Because wasn't that very apple plucked from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Now, this symbol is plastered all over our planet, OK? We see it in alchemy. We see it in city municipalities. We see it in company logos. We even see it in the sky, and what I'm going to show you right now is the lunar analemma. And I said, OK, but what does that have to do with my landscapes? And she said, everything. On the one hand, you have the landscape of emptiness. On the other, you have the landscape of virtual fulfillment. On the one hand, you have purposelessness. On the other, virtual purpose. Boredom, entertainment, pain, pleasure. The list goes on and on. And so what did I do? I began to chart all this information. And this is the consciousness positioning system. And it goes something like this. Here we have Alegria in her wholeness. This is fifth dimension. And what we did is we ate the apple and we fell. This is the first fall of man. And the realm of exploration that we have for each dimension is shown here. There's Alegria. And here is the landscape of duality. Now, each landscape has its explorer as well. And in the dimension of Alegria, excuse me, we have the joyous human being. And below that, in the lower dimension, we have the human, as we know pretty much today, all over the planet, between duality all the time. She said, now, there's a very interesting thing about duality. There's an incredible amount, amount of energy here in these opposites that can be used to transcend the lemnus gate and go back to fifth dimensional consciousness. And Carl Jung was onto this, she said. Carl Jung said, only here in life on Earth where the opposites clash together can the general level of consciousness be raised. And she said, one of the problems, though, is that this conflict is actually inside us. And on this planet, everyone's trying to resolve their conflicts outwardly. And that's why we see so much destruction, hatred, and violence on the planet. And she said, Carl Jung also knew that. He said, the first half of life is devoted to forming a healthy ego. The second half is going inward and letting go of it. So here we have the first half of life forming a healthy ego, and the second half going inward and letting go of it. She said, but there's a problem. You showed me something of dire concern. And I said, what did I do? What did I show you? And she said, in the natural course of human evolution, the lemnus gate, duality is supposed to be transcended. And you showed me a duality that had merged. I said, I did. And she said, look, you have the physical world on the one hand and the virtual world on the other. Watch what happens when they merge. Did you see that? The digital becomes the physical, and the physical becomes the digital. Let's watch that one more time. See that? She said, what this tells me 
is that something is tampering with the natural energy field. Technology is attempting to resolve the conflict for us, not with a shift in higher consciousness, but through a manipulation of perception. And in doing so, it's creating a new landscape, one that actually confirms yet a further fall from our original nature. And so I charted that here on the map. This here I call the second fall of man. And she said, look, you've made an inverse universe of me. You've made an artificial allegria. And I said, well, if that's the case, then I ate an artificial apple, and I can assure you I didn't do that. And she said, are you sure? <laughs> what began as a natural fall with a natural apple is now an artificial fall with an artificial apple. And she said, make no mistake, there's a big difference between falling from paradise and falling for paradise. With the release of the Apple iPhone in 2007, mixed reality began to become a reality. And it's tampering with the energy field. I'm going to show you how. This, one way to look at a lemniscate is you can actually untwist it, and you'll see it's just a circular band. See that? Twist, twist. Technology is actually compromising the integrity of this nature by slicing through it and twisting the band at its edges there. This, folks, no longer is a lemniscate. This is called a Mobius strip. And the interesting thing about a Mobius strip is that it is a non-orientable manifold. And to understand what that means, watch this arrow. Halfway through the journey, do you see what happens? A non-orientable manifold has a path that takes the traveler back to its original starting point, mirror inversed. What was once outer and inner separately can now be outer and inner at the exact same point in space. And she said, we saw that here in the objective world. And we also see it in the subjective world where earthly consciousness merges with the algorithm. Yes, the explorer of the inverse universe is the avatar species. Hey, she said, you are what you eat. So it's as if technology has taken our original lemniscate and sort of grabbed it at the handles and pulled it down into a lower dimension of artificiality. This here, folks, is the artificial energy field of the second fall of man. Hello? And it's interesting how it looks like VR goggles. Now, this might sound all conceptual, but the reality is, is that the oncoming inverse universe is all around us. Any time you buy into defying reality, or sitting at a field without being at a field, or turning your reality into an arcade game. In short, when your natural alegria is replaced by a virtual happiness, the inverse universe has been consumed by you. Now, I don't know if these are supposed to be goggles or if those are wings. It's all around us, folks. Open your eyes. And she said, the good thing is, there's actually still time to transcend. And, I, and so I'd like to actually share with you uh, a little excerpt of a poem called Little Gidding by um, T.S. Eliot. We have not ceased from exploration, and the end of all, all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time, through the unknown, unremembered gate, when the last of earth left to discover is that which was the beginning, at the source of the longest river, the voice of the hidden waterfall, and the children in the apple tree. And she said, 
although there is still time to transcend, I tell you this, time will be up. Why? Because the next mixing in the Silicon Valley kitchen is one of man and machine. This, folks, is the third and final fall of mankind. We have not ceased from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time or not. Your choice, folks. <laughs>